Hi, I'm John Jermy and this is a series of presentations about the use of technology in indexing. In the last presentation I introduced the Sky Index program and now I want to look at some of the menu settings in that program. I'm going to begin with the options menu and specifically with the preferences menu. There are a lot of settings here, I'm not going to try and cover every single one of them but uh, just to have a look at the more important ones. You can see that preferences is available even when there's no index loaded and this is because these are program wide preferences they apply no matter what index you're working on. It opens up as a, a dialog box with four tabs and a lot of the settings you can see already are yes no options represented here by check boxes. Let's have a look at the uh, general options here first. Automatically load last index that brings up the last index that you're working on provided that's available when you start the program. Seek current record when changing views. Now at the moment that's off if I open up a, an index we saw last time how to resort it in various ways. Because that option is off, when I resort the index, I end up back at the top of the index. So each new sequence puts me in a puts me back at the top. If I turn that option on, then whatever in whatever if entry I have selected when I resort the index that's where I end up in the sorted version. So we're still with Muriel Bennett. Again, if we resort by entry time, we're still with Muriel Bennett there too. Okay. Preview pane. This is the display over here at the left that shows you more or less what's going to come out when the index is printed. Again, we can turn that off. Or in that case you can see there it moves to the top of the screen. This was an earlier, this is the way it worked in the earlier version of Sky Index before they moved it to the left hand side. Again we'll change that back. Options preferences. Display on the left there. The metric system for those of us who use millimeters and centimeters rather than inches for things like uh, margins of pages and so forth. Adjust punctuation. This is, allows uh, people to enter uh, things using English U, uh, UK type punctuation conventions and have the program adjust them to US conventions. Uh, the most obvious example of that is if we write a an entry in quotes followed by a comma You can see that here in the data entry field, the quote precedes the comma. Up here in the output type field, where it shows us what the printout will be like, the comma precedes the quote. That's the US convention there, and that's because we've turned on the adjust punctuation option. If I turn it off and click on OK, you can see it's back to exactly the same as the original. Looking now at the data entry options, Immediately verify cross-references. If you're putting in a, a C reference or a C also reference, the program can check for you to see if that entry is already in the index. Uh, if I turn that on now, I'll come down to the bottom of the index and make a new entry. As soon as I press enter, it checks to see if that entry is in the index and if it's not it comes up with an error message and I get a choice of options as to what to do. If you prefer not to be interrupted like this you can do the same thing at the end of the indexing process with something called the error scan and that will also look for unmatched cross-references but this is just if you want to be reminded as you go. Next page reminder this warns you if you have too many entries with a single page number. Uh, that's usually a sign that you've forgotten to update the page number as you've moved from one page to the next. Smart quotes and remove double spaces. These both just tidy up the text while you're typing, uh, avoiding areas that you have to go back and fix later on. The text color options are to do with the various kinds of formatting that we can apply to text. 
Uh, we'll have a look more at those when we get to editing later on. And the separator options here are to do with taking a uh, heading in two parts and breaking it into a heading and a subheading, or combining a subheading with a heading to get a, a larger heading, or splitting a list of items into separate entries. So I'll just demonstrate the uh, promote and demote split now. To promote, sorry, to demote, we select an entry with a comma like this. Remember, a comma is our demote separator. And I press F6. That splits it into a heading and a subheading. Same thing in reverse. If I select a subheading and press F5, that promotes it back to a, a main heading and adds that separator there, the comma. So that's the role of the comma there and breaking up something into a heading and subheading or vice versa. To split a list, let me check the list separator character. Uh, I'll put a semicolon there just to make it different from the, the other. And if I now say cut and paste a list from somewhere else and it's uh, arranged like this. I can split that list with the Control alt p command and for every item that's separated by a semicolon it makes a new entry there with the same page number. So those are the options that are related to the promote and demote arrangements here. Uh, moving on to program font, this is fairly self-evident. It's the typeface in which the body of the text in the index will appear. Note that this doesn't have to be the same as the uh, word processing output file, it's just the display on the screen here. File locations, these are the default locations for storing index files, backups and templates. Remember we saw last time how to make a backup through the file menu there. Very handy if you have access to a cloud storage system or perhaps a, a memory stick that you can take away and keep somewhere else away from the the hard disk on which the index file itself is stored. Uh, templates. A template in Sky is a collection of settings. So all of the settings that you uh, create under the options menu can be stored and by default they'll be stored in this de de directory specified here. Spell check. It is possible to do a spell check from within Sky. It's a little bit cumbersome but uh, it can be done. I prefer to do it from within the word processing file but if you do use Sky for your spell checking this is where the dictionary will be stored. The word processor, a uh, default word processor you can see is WordPad. If you have Word on your system or LibreOffice, uh, Sky Index will find that and substitute that instead. All that means is that if we do index edit print as we looked at uh, last time, it'll bring it up in that particular specified program. So here it is for instance in WordPad. The last tab here, user information is specifically for joint efforts where you've got a team of people working on the same index using different machines, different versions of the program. The entries created or edited by any one person will be tagged with that person's details. If you want to see that in the index at all, you just have to say view creator or view editor and that information appears next to each of the entries. So you can go through your joint index and see exactly who's responsible for making and editing any one entry in that, uh, that index. I'll turn them off again the same way. Okay, that's it for the preferences menu and also for this presentation. In the next presentation I'll talk about the index settings that allow you to control how a particular index is styled. They're down here. Until then, thank you for your time.